2017's game roster was absolutely stacked. It was pretty much guaranteed that like every month you would get something that was really, really good. Horizon Zero Dawn, Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, Nier Automata. It was just consistent hit after hit after hit. Okay, you know I'm not talking about you. How'd you even sneak into the video? Who let you in? Overall, 2017 was a pretty fantastic year for games, and with Tales of Arise having recently been released, I figured I'd talk about one of my favorite 2017 releases, and Arise's predecessor, Tales of Berseria. Let's get to it. Tales of Berseria is an action JRPG developed by Bandai Namco and released in 2017, two years after Tales of Garbage. Tales of Zestiria, a game that absolutely everybody loved and adored and had zero issue with. But really though, Tales of Zestiria was plenty disappointing and that disappointment led to Tales fans begging Bamco that the next installment would deliver in areas where Zestiria did not. And let's just say, they far exceeded fan expectations. Bamco has finally dropped out of their sugar and rainbows, my friends are my power storylines, and at long last entered their dark grunge alt rock era by going with a darker plot this time around. And let me tell you, things get pretty edgy. In the best possible way. Quick side note, Tales of Berseria is actually a prequel to Tales of Zestiria and takes place a couple thousand years in the past. Same world, different story. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which order you play in, but I would recommend playing Zestiria first because it's the worst of the two and you should get that out of the way immediately. If anything, you should play Zestiria for Edna and Lila alone, okay? They carried the whole game. Trust me. But back to the main story. You play as Velvet Crow, a highly, highly bold, italicized, underlined, highly traumatized individual who has quite literally had everything she's ever loved ripped away from her by her brother-in-law and leader of the exorcist group The Abbey, Artorius Mitch Colbrand. And I'm sure you're asking, what exactly did Artorius do that warrants Velvet to jump from continent to continent, wreaking havoc, causing ridiculous amounts of property damage just to murder this man? Well, he might have sacrificed her younger brother Lafayette during a ritual known as the Advent in an attempt to stop the demon blight, a disease, that causes individuals to lose their sense of self and transform into demons. And I mean, I get where the dude is coming from with wanting to stop the demon blight and all, because people turning into demons on the regular is definitely a little bit of a cause for concern. But this, this right here, this is not how you do it. Just go to family counseling next time, good God. On top of the totally not cool brother killing, I do not endorse that. Her entire village may have been turned into demons a few moments ago too. And Velvet herself may have been turned into Ethereum because of her exposure to the demon blight. But hey, she did get a super sick demon arm out of it. So silver lining, I guess. Gotta take the positives with the negatives. Don't let that dead brother thing get you down, girl. Woo! Yeah. The overarching theme of Berseria is revenge. Just straight up old fashioned, if I see you in the streets, it's on site revenge. And there's a little bit of self acceptance, discovering individuality, independence, sense of self, and stopping an incredibly obviously evil organization from turning people into mindless robots who are free of sin. You know, just standard JRPG stuff, but the revenge is the good bit. That's what you're here for. A cast of characters who didn't grow up together in a small town outside of a big city? In my Tales game? It's more likely than you think. But for realsies, for a Tales game, that's actually kind of crazy. No one knows each other? As far as Tales games go, this is practically blasphemy. I'm clutching my pearls right now. The Berseria cast works together almost exclusively out of necessity. There's no old friendships or childhood bonds tying them together, or unbreakable promises made on top of a water tower before you head out to the big city and join the military where they inject you with stuff that turns your eyes blue. We're all working together because the people that we want to kill individually just happen to be in the same place, not because we like each other. And while I do love a good, we've been best friends for 10 years and now I'm helping you on your quest for revenge moment, this is just refreshing to see. It's fun really opens up that found family trope that I love. So let's start off with Velvet, our newest protagonist and huge breath of fresh air after our last couple of protags who have been, by comparison, overwhelmingly positive bundles of joy. She hasn't taken a bath in three years, she's unhinged, she's feral, and I hate to say it, but she's really giving 2009 DeviantArt OC. I mean, look at her. You can't tell me you haven't seen this exact design on DeviantArt in the last 10 years. Among fans, Velva has been regarded as a character that's a little bit too edgy for her own good, but come on, man. Are you really telling me that if you witnessed your brother-in-law sacrifice your kid brother by impaling him under the blood moon on a crisp fall evening, that your day wouldn't be just a little bit ruined? 
because that's a pretty big inconvenience, not to mention really rude. Velvet is also the first solo female protagonist in a main Tales game. That's pretty cool. Sorry to the 17 Mila stands, but she doesn't count. On Velvet's quest for revenge, she's joined by Lafayette. He's a Malkim who's regained his free will from the Abbey. And maybe it's just me, but I don't think that naming someone that you met five minutes ago and then immediately kidnapped after your dead brother is uh, a healthy coping mechanism. But I'm not a cardiologist, so what do I know? Eleanor, an Abbey exorcist, founder of the Artorias Apology Committee, and the only person at her place of work who wasn't in on the big surprise. The way she calls Velvet a demon sounds like a slur. It just doesn't sit right with me. I vow to challenge you, Demon Velvet! Yeah, you know what that sounds like? A call to the Abbey HR department. Mogilu, full-time instigator and part-time witch. She is hands down the best character in the video game. No, I do not take criticism. I am correct. You are wrong. This is the best character and this is what the people want to see. This is how you do comic relief developers. Take notes. Aizen, a pirate with a really inconvenient curse. Big fan of following his creed and manning his own ship and like believing in the heart of the cards or something. I don't really know. And Rokuro. I don't have anything to say. He's about as interesting as a styrofoam cup with like a hole at the bottom. Tales games hardly ever lack in the character department, with one or two exceptions. But mostly Bamco is pretty damn good at churning out compelling characters that you want to root for, and this installment is no different. Supporting characters and minor characters are also written very well. There are several characters who, at first glance, seem to be there just to drive the plot forward, but end up playing pretty big parts in the main character's individual stories as everything ties together. I love you, lizard man! Visually, Berseria for sure has one of the most unique looking casts overall. None of these people should have ever crossed paths. This is a group of people who attended Anime Expo for completely different reasons and ended up in the same car because they all used Uberpool. Now, they may all be protagonists, but um, they ain't the best people. They casually commit arson, treason, and murder all before lunch like it's part of their day job. And by killing off Abbey members, the only people who know to keep the general public from being snacked on like a Nutrigrain bar by a monster, they're indirectly killing hundreds, maybe thousands of people, and pushing the world towards an age of chaos. But hey, gotta get that sweet, sweet revenge somehow. Not only that, they're attacking port towns. Those are like the most important towns. And you're screwing up the trade routes, no wonder they're trying to arrest you guys. Your series battle system does away with using circle and X as your main method of using basic attacks and arts as seen in previous entries. And instead, Bamco has blessed us with the gift of customization. Oh, it's gorgeous. You can make four different combos made up of four different martial arts and hidden arts. These will be mapped to triangle, square, circle, and X in whatever order you fancy. And you don't have to stick to just one string of combos. If you're feeling real saucy, you can switch combos in the middle of a combo. This allows you to make tons of different combos for tons of different situations and can let you capitalize on enemies' elemental weaknesses. In battle, you can hold up to five souls, those little blue dudes at the bottom. The more souls you have, the more attacks and combos you can land. Souls can be lost in battle from stuns and status ailments. So keep your dukes up and don't let the enemies get a jump on you. Break Souls are a new mechanic that allows you to use a big flashy art to further extend your combos as long as you meet the Break Soul requirements. Each character has their own unique Break Art and the requirements to activate them are different. You can also freely switch between characters in battle or switch out in battle characters for bench characters whenever you feel like you want to mix it up. Switching out a character will result in a Switch Blast that can be used to carry over and continue combo hits. The absolute best part of Berseria's battle system hands down, is free movement and being able to rotate the camera while in battle. If you've never played a Tales game before, you have no idea how revolutionary this is. I could cry, I, I really could. As buttery smooth as combat is, I'll admit it can still feel kind of button mashy. Or maybe that's just me because my little rat brain can't remember what arts I set to what button. Either way, battles are just as flashy as ever and even more fun with these new changes. The series' battle system is actually a little bit deeper than it appears to be on the surface. There are some subtle mechanics that you can really dive into to make your combos a bit stronger than they already are, but if you're like me and you think deep diving into battle mechanics is for nerds, and you're here to just use whatever attacks look the coolest, the battle system is pretty darn good right out the gate. Throughout Berseria, you're going to be picking up weapons. A lot of weapons you're going to constantly be picking up the exact same weapon. Luckily for us, Berseria has implemented a handy dandy weapon dismantlement system. Just hop on over to your local weapon shop, dismantle the 85 duplicate weapons you have, and bing bang boom, you've got yourself some raw materials that can be used to beef up your better and much cooler looking weapons. Each weapon has a master skill and may sometimes have a random skill tacked onto it. Master skills are default skills that all weapons of the same type will have, but what's really important to look out for are random skills and enhancement bonuses. Random skills can give you a decent edge in battle, and enhancement bonuses are unlocked whenever you upgrade a weapon. Same goes for buying weapons too. Shops can have several types of one weapon, which is a 
really interesting sales strategy to have as a weapon store. I mean, if you want to make money or not. And that shiny new quartz blade might look really tempting, but its skills and enhancement bonuses might not be worth it in the long run. Honestly, I prefer to dismantle a bunch of dupes and load up on materials to just max out on whatever weapon looks the coolest because I will always believe in style over substance. But I guess if you're an elite min-maxing god gamer, make sure you read the fine print to be sure that you're not missing out on a game-changing skill or a skill that really suits your playstyle. It can save your life. I'm serious. When you get to Baird Marsh, you will look back on this point in the video and realize that I was right and I tried to warn you. But really though, I was not joking when I said you'd be picking up a ton of duplicate weapons, and those babies stack up way faster than you realize. I recommend you make some tea and catch up on a good podcast or something because you're going to be dismantling for a hot minute, and this sound is going to drive you insane. <laughs> Please move on to the next segment, my brain is melting out of my ears! Berseria does so many things correctly. The characters, the battle system, the story, it's almost perfect. And I'm putting a lot of emphasis on almost because these dungeons are lame as fuck, oh my god! Berseria's dungeons have got to be my biggest gripe with the game. I hate to say it, but they just suck. They cycle between a forest. Maze forest, open field, open field featuring water, crystal cave, but then they change it up and give you a cave with grass. It's just repetitive, boring, basic, uninspired, and uh, synonym for boring, arid and dry. It's arid and dry. Compared to pretty much every other Tales game, this is just bleh. Especially older Tales games like Vesperia, where dungeon design was top tier. Dungeons just feel like long, windy hallways that lead you to a blocked path or a dead end, only to then have you backtrack halfway across the map to find the actual way to proceed. It just leads to the dungeons feeling longer than they actually are and becoming tedious. None of the dungeons really stand out or have any kind of interesting mechanic that sets them apart from others. Even the final dungeon is just... aight. And as someone who loves a well-designed dungeon, it's a bit disappointing to see, especially from a series that usually gets this right. Cell shaded 3D realistic anime graphics haters are punching the air right now because for four installments in a row, Bamco has used the Zillia engine for in-game graphics. And this has sort of been a point of contention for a hot minute. And by a hot minute, I mean since literally 2011. This seems to be an art style that a lot of people either love or hate, but I don't know. I think it's really pretty. Even though Berseria is using the same engine as Zillia and Zestiria, there have been plenty of noticeable changes to the graphics and character animations. Everything's a little bit more vibrant and character movements are smoother too. Dungeons may be boring, but hey, at least they're pretty good looking. Outside scenery always looks pretty lush and those crystals in the cave that you spend 30 hours in? Gorgeous. And you gotta give it to them, they picked a really nice shade of grey for those dungeon walls too. Really... charcoal-y. Nice. Alrighty, so I know that I said that the dungeons were the worst thing to come out of this game, and, and they are. They're still pretty trash, but the minigames give them a run for their money for sure. And there may be a smidge of bias here because for some reason my brain is just wired to hate minigames, but these games are seriously bad. Especially the Geoboard game, dude, this looks major ass. Why do the controls feel like this? The only mini game that is worth your time at all is Character Cards, a game where you match up Tails characters with other characters that were present in their game, and the way you match them up will determine what points go into which categories over on the side here. It's super simple but super fun, and I haven't enjoyed a mini game this much since Spirit Break from Final Fantasy X 2. And yeah, sure dude, whatever, if you don't want to heed the warnings of a person who's played 85 hours of this game and you just insist on giving the mini games a try, don't say I didn't warn ya, cause none of these are good. There's the combo thing, Bianfu skipping, mug match, which is just abysmal, the worst fishing mini game that I have ever laid my eyes on, and the serving game, aka food service PTSD simulator. And I do not play this one because it brings up a lot of really bad memories that I've had to go to therapy for. Teehee. After completing a minigame, you're awarded Tails Coins, and these can be cashed in at vendors for accessories. You can also find accessories and chests throughout the game, but the minigame vendor is the only place where you can be who you truly are, and wear a full Norman suit. And I won't judge you. All are welcome here. For some extra cash, you can take on code Red Hunts, which are contracts that you can complete for the Blood Wings. There's loads of different monsters to hunt, like this serial killer tree and the noxious creep? What is up with these names? 
These are all pretty simple to complete. Track down the monster, take it out while it's just minding its own business, trying to make some money to support its family, probably, and return to the Bloodwings for gold. Bing, bang, boom, you now have enough money to buy normal suits for the rest of the party members. I know you're gonna do it, dude. Don't even, don't even lie to me. I know you. Characters with a green exclamation mark above their head offer side quests. They're usually your run-of-the-mill monster hunt or fetch quests, but can lead to main character subquests too. And none of them are missable. And that's pretty neat, I guess. I mean, I I didn't play them because I spent all my time on character cards. But, you know, at least you know that they're in the game. You're welcome. Anyone who's ever heard of the Tales series in passing has probably heard of the holy and sanctified Tales trilogy made up of Tales of Symphonia, Tales of the Abyss, and Tales of Vesperia. But we're definitely going to have to start calling it the Holy Quadrility or Holy Quadrilateral or something like that because Tales of Berseria really is one of the best games in the series and it just deserves a spot up there with the big boys. Berseria is pretty close to excellent. I'm all for happy-go-lucky peace and love JRPGs where we all hold hands and sing kumbaya and save the world with the power of love and friendship. But sometimes you just want something that's a tiny bit on the gritty side, you know? And Berseria really scratches that itch. As much as I love Berseria, and I do genuinely think that it's probably my favorite game of the series, it doesn't particularly excel in one area over the others. It's just got the right amount of everything to add up to a super solid and enjoyable JRPG. And there you go, Tales of Berseria. Best Tales game of all time. So far. It's a really good time, I promise. Guarantee you to your money back. I mean, not from me, but like, from GameStop. As long as you bring it back within seven days, they'll give you a full refund, so ask them for it. I'm not selling the game. <laughs>